should start apologizing because we are launching you know, an advertisement that we don't have to do something on our hands. <laughs> yeah, we were told, we were told by the Unicorn Press that by the end of the day, the books would be here. Yeah? Okay, so if anyone gets interested in getting the book, we will be around from this afternoon. So it will be the whole week, so you can have it. Uh, Okay, I'll talk a little bit about the motivation that we had to write this book, the process of writing, and also a little bit about the content of the book. So now we have seen the cover, it's pretty cool. I will show the slides that I have prepared. I don't want to talk much. and myself, Isaac and Bruce, they were my supervisors in my PhD thesis and we were working together on this. So, uh, the first motivation that I had, and Professor Isabel also uh, suggested to publish Tarsus Conference, was that we had to show to a wider public Tarski's teaching style, because Tarski was a great, one of the finest logicians. That goes without saying, but many, many people may not know is how good he was as a teacher, how good his lecture was, and how he presented the subjects, whatever subject he had to present, and how good he was in presenting them. And to me, uh, his lectures are just a masterpiece for any teacher. Anyone who wants to prepare, who needs to prepare a talk. It's very well organized, it's didactically presented. And you see that Tarski, he doesn't miss a point during the whole talk. He doesn't waste the words. All the passages of the talk are well connected and linked. And as Professor Isla said, it starts from a very from very basic notions, like the subject of this talk was relational. Basic notions of relational algebra are high school notions such as binary relations, composition of binary relations, union of binary, binary relations, those set theoretical basic notions. And he started from that, but of course he didn't stay at his level. And when I started to watch those, those videos, I was surprised that I was understanding because uh, when Professor Hitler was suggesting me to watch the video, I said, well, Tarski, one of the biggest. Greatest logicians. I want to understand a word of what he's going to say. That's going to be a very high advanced topic. But then I started to listen to about binary relations, compos compositions, and I thought, I saw it in my high school. But then Tars takes the audience to a higher level, of course. And at some point, I didn't follow through, but what happened was that I got eager to learn and to study more to understand the final questions and the final open problems. And at the end of the day, I think that's what a good lecture is about. I mean, whatever subject is, regardless of the subject, a good lecture should start from to get, your, get down to the audience level and bring them higher and make them eager to learn more. And that's what Tarsus lectures do. And if you have the opportunity, this week you are here, you are around, you can have the book, but you can also watch yourself the videos of the conference of Tarsus Lectures and the archives uh, just nearby the play. So you have, if you have the chance, you're going to see it. But I will show you a bit, a little bit of the Tarsus talk at the end of this presentation. So our first motivation was to bring to the public this side of Tarsus that some people may not know. Tarsus as a teacher. Second motivation was at the time when I started studying about relation algebra and the calculus of relations, I looked for some reference in the literature. And at the time, it was 2006, there was Roger Wallach's book just coming out, 2006, and five Sonny Hirsch books, a uh, book about relation algebra by games. But those books were certainly not for beginners. 
they are not introductory books. And I didn't see any introduction that I, for me would be useful because I didn't have the knowledge to follow those books. And you found that there was this lack of introduction for a relation of the German in the literature. And we thought that it would be a good idea to transcript Tarsus lecture and write something that would be introductory for beginners. That was one of the reasons that we thought this book would, that people would get interested in. Especially those who would like to start studying relation algebra from the beginning. And obviously, obviously starts this lecture as a start of everything. And obviously, it starts there. So, when you're writing this, as Professor Isla said, you wrote to some people that uh, work with relation algebra to groups of research in England, in the United States, in Bulgaria, and all of them, when I, when I told them that we had these Tarsus lectures here and wanted to publish them, they, they got very excited. Not only because of the value of the content of the subject, but because of its historical value. It was Tarsus, the man who started the subject, giving a talk, a introductory talk about the subject. That would be very nice, very interesting. So they were looking forward to see this coming out. Well, it's coming out now, 10 years later, but it's coming out. Can you contribute it? Sorry? They can Yeah, yeah, they gave some tips. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as it was said, this all started with my master dissertation. I got here at play. First year, I was just taking the courses as is usual for students to get here. In my second year, I started to look for a topic to develop from my master's dissertation, and I talked to Professor Itala. She suggested to go and watch Tarsus' lecture because she recalled that there were these open problems that could be still interesting. So there I went, I watched the lectures, I enjoyed, as I told you, I, I, I felt like I was understanding something. Learn to understand more. Uh, of course, at, at first I had some troubles to understand the English. My English is not good enough to, to get the listening, and the sound is also not good enough because back in 1975 the, the sound system devices were not that good to capture the sound as good as you can get it nowadays. So I had this problem to understand it. But after we worked many, many times, and that was the most boring part of we worked many, many times to understand it, but after uh, a while I started to understand it, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, so in my master dissertation, I, I, I worked on the open problems that Tarski uh, left in the lectures. I didn't solve any of them, but I just uh, I did a survey of the, the value that had been done on top of the and uh, it was suggested that we should put a transcription in my master dissertation, and it's there as an appendix for people to get access to the lectures. Well, and then I went to my PhD uh, degree, to take my PhD degree, and uh, we had already the transcription, but we also missed told you, an uh, introductory text about relation algebra. So I, Mita Lekutusu, had this idea of writing something that would be a gentle, gentle introduction to relation algebra and put Tarsus lecture as an appendix of it. That was the first thing. <coughs> and we started working, writing the book, we are still working on this book. But later on, we had this invitation from, well, this invitation from the Publisher here, the Kentucky Press, that he got to know that we had these this videos here and he, he thought it would be interesting to publish Tarsus lectures as a book. So we already had some material that we were writing, we were writing for the book. And, uh, we had this, this invitation to publish Tarsus conference as a book. So we used some of the material that we had to put in the book as a chapter just to contextualize Tarsus lecture and Tarsus 
subject, the, the historical development of relation algebra, so the reader can can get uh, uh, to the subject in a nice way, in a gentle way, and uh, then we wrote this book that's coming out today. But what happened is that the, the publisher wanted the book to be in Portuguese for some reason. We wanted the book to be in English for obvious reasons. So he didn't give in, he didn't give in even. Then we got to the bilingual book. So this is a Portuguese English book. We have the introduction in Portuguese, the introduction in English, then we have the transcription of Tarski's lectures with the translations of the transcriptions. And we also have at the end of the, the, end of the book as an appendix, the proceedings of the meeting that were was organized due to Tasha's visit. Talking a little bit about the content of the book. So we wrote a preface that uh, gives information about Tasha's visit. People who bring about Tasha's here, how the visit was, and, uh, and so on, about the Congress the meeting that we had here when, uh, when Tasha came. And then we wrote this introduction where we write about the seeds and the start of the development of relation algebra. From the very beginning, relation algebra is a topic that is in this, uh, what some people call the algebraic tradition of logic, the algebra of, like, of logic tradition. And we started to write things. George Boole, when he started to break with the old Aristotelian tradition and start with his algebraic tradition, uh, introducing the calculus for the logic of proposition. And then we, we, we say something about how this deviation was made to the, to the logic as a calculus. And then the guy who really started to work on binary relation was. August de Morgan. He, uh, de Morgan had this project of doing all the demonstrations in Euclidean geometry, just using Aristotle's syllogism. That's what he wanted. But he soon realized that he wouldn't get it, because it was missing something crucial for any mathematical reason that was a relation, dealing with binary relation, any inference. And next, we deal with this relation of reason. So, only with syllogies, he couldn't get all the demonstrations of the region geometry. So, he started to work on introduce binary relation, the study of binary relation formally, and the first operations of binary relations, such as composition and inversion. And he also worked with some other uh, operations. But his notation was not good enough for a calculus. The man who improved the notation was Charles Pierce. Charles Pierce wanted something like both calculus. He joined the best of the both worlds. He got the calculus of Booth, but with a richer logic, the logic of the norm. Booth had nice calculus, but a very restricted logic. The Morgan had nice logic by the logic of predicates. Case, but he didn't have a nice calculus. So Charters joined both of them and, and introduced the first system of uh, relational calculus. And then Ernest Schroeder developed Charles Pierce calculus to a higher level and used Pierce calculus not only for logic, not only for logical illustration, but also for mathematics. He wanted the calculus to be a framework, framework to do mathematics. He wanted to solve problems in the foundations of mathematics with the calculus of relations. So Schroeder was the first one who envisaged this potential of the calculus, not only for logic, but also for mathematics. And then Lovenheim didn't contribute much with the calculus, but he was a defensor of the calculus. He thought that this system, Schroeder system, was the, the adequate framework for doing mathematics. And its famous theory was proven in the system. Nowadays, we know what the understanding for first-party 
logic with modern formal analysis. But originally it was made in the first Schroeder system, and he was the defensor of the system. He, he used to say that the system applies some of the contradictions that other formal language would get. Well, many years after, Drastic got interested in, in calculus and his, his uh, project for this calculus of population was to find the algebraic counterpart of first order logic. As uh, Lindenbaum types the algebra does for propositional logic, he wanted some candidate, some formal candidate for algebraic first order logic. Well, at the end, it did not work. Relation algebra was not this framework. And then he, with others, collaborators, developed major algebras and other formulas. But relation algebra, uh, despite the fact that it didn't work for his original project, uh, he found it, he kept studying because he proved that with the, with the framework of relation algebra, one could make mathematics, the whole mathematics. At least what one can make with set theory, you could make in the same way with the calculus of relation algebra. This, this, this project was, uh, as, I, as I said, was for sort of sugar, but Tarski made it happen. He proved that with relation algebra theory, one can do all mathematics. Well, and then in the book, we, in, in the introduction, we also write something about the late development of the open problems of Tarskis and other problems that, we, that are still open in the literature. So we come to recent times on the problems of subject. Then chapter 1 and 2, the lectures of Tarskis and the appendix, the proceedings of the symposium that was organized when Tarskis was here. So, now I think you are Eager to see the menu action. So I have five minutes. Let's see two minutes. Just to talk. He's a man, yeah? He deserves it. <laughs> uh, so good. two minutes video just for you not to get sleep. <laughs> I think it's enough, but if you want to watch more task, you can go to the, the archives just nearby to play and watch more of these lectures. Let's see. Let's see if it works.
Nah. Thank you very much.